Hello there, this is Jeff, EDS Inc. Shandon, and we've got another little video that we're putting together today. We have a, a, a forklift down, and uh, you might recall some, a couple of years ago, I re rebuilt a bearing, a uh, thrust bearing on that lift. Well, that thrust bearing continued to work, but the needle bearings uh, along the kingpin gave out, and that kingpin, uh, with the friction against the... Uh, the steering uh, axle uh, elongated the uh, housings for the bearings and so uh, I checked the pins the pins are okay they're all the same dimension all the way up and down but the the, uh, uh, the bearings themselves went out completely I mean all the bearings fell out of them and uh, it wore against one side of the housing of the uh, axle so we're going to rebore that and we're going to uh, put a sleeve in and then uh, reinstall the bearings and reassemble the forklift. So that's what we got out. So as you can see, I've got the forklift all torn down. It's uh, jacked up and on uh, wood blocks. Uh, I've removed uh, the axle. Uh, the, uh, let me get down under there and I'll show you how that mounts. So the axle mounts up, in, it's, uh, uh, it's kind of a pivoting rounded edge, I'll show you that as we get to it. But it fits inside of a block that fits up in here and then a cap holds it up on both sides. So uh, that's uh, how that uh, axle is fastened and it kind of pivots back and forth up in here because the, the uh, well you can almost see that, see that angle there and the scribe in the back? The, that uh, uh, shaft that comes out of the uh, axle is rounded on the top and so it can pivot back and forth a little bit. So uh, anyway, I'll take you back over and I'll show you the axle. So these are the blocks that go up in there and the axle fits into this hole here and uh, fits up into the uh, housing that you just saw. And then we have a flat pay, plate that comes up and uh, fastens that into place uh, so that the axle stays in place. That's our, our hydraulics for the uh, wheels and you can tell that we had a real issue with our our wheel here because you can see how it's narrow here and it's thicker here on this side so we were getting really bad wear and that was due to those bearings go out. Now fortunately this part here uh, the it, this is bolted to the uh, kingpin so that uh, uh, there is no friction inside this part here. So there's no wear in this part whatsoever. All the wear is on the bearings on either side of that and the thrust bearing that sits on top. So there's no uh, issue of wear on this part whatsoever. So this is good. Uh, this is fine and the dimensions on the ID are, are fine. So we're good uh, there. So this is our axle. I've cleaned it up. A little bit of the uh, blue paint is st sticking out. This is the part that fits in that block and that fits up in the top. Now this side faces towards the front of the forklift. Uh, the other side is towards the back. Uh, we'll show you these bearings. These bearings in here uh, did okay. They're all, let's see if we can show that. They're still uh, in somewhat good shape. The uh, ones that are bad, and I'll flip this over, are this one here. This is elongated. Uh, there's a lip on this side that you can barely see there. Uh, and that stops the bearing. The bearing's pressed up from the back side and it's supposed to stop against that lip and on this side it's just smooth as silk there's no lip on it whatsoever it's just been worn out that direction so this is an elongated hole now and the same thing with this bottom hole here now I did uh, put the bearing, new bearings in here these are going to be pressed back out because I uh, uh, you know I can't well you might even be able to see that let me see if I can Show you 
See over on the side of that bearing? See that space? That's how elongated it is on that uh, bearing. So I'm going to push this bearing back out and I'm going to make sleeves, rebore that and make sleeves to uh, fix that problem and then we'll reassemble everything the way it should be. I'm going to have to make a boot for this as well. Not make it, but I'm going to have to modify it because there's a, a middle plate that sits on the top. This is the top side. Now that's the downside. And uh, the, there's a middle plate that sits against this uh, within that little housing. And that metal plate on the this side was uh, damaged. So we're going to have to make a new metal plate uh, for this as well. Um, and uh, kind of a friction plate that it rides on. And uh, so there's a little bit of work left to do. So we'll get, get with it. This uh, kind of gives you a better view of how out around this is. You can see the bearing in the, the uh, housing there and how much over to this side uh, we have a gap. So a lot of wear on this this side here. So I plan to uh, ream this all out and drop in a sleeve and then uh, make that fit. old bearing. This is an old bearing. And sleeve filled with grease and garbage. But they've had their day. So this side doesn't have to be replaced or drilled. It's the opposite side. This side the housing's all fine. Okay bearing uh, measuring the, the bearing is showing uh, four fifty five and a half uh, so that'd be po uh, point four five 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 uh, is what that shows what we'll do now is we'll measure the hole the idea of the hole and uh, see uh, what that is And it's showing 450, three and a half. So we're off about uh, the, the, uh, the idea, this hole is about uh, one and a half. Different than, than our uh, housing of our bearing. So it'll be a tight fit there, a press fit. So that's what we have to do. Okay, so here's my setup. I put a, a bronze rod in here and I've got it tied back so it's against the back side of our, our uh, holes. And uh, because it seems like everything, the oblong is out this end. If you look at it, you can see it. The, the, uh, the, uh, this brass round uh, fits snugly around the back side, all, all the way to within the, a little bit of the front. So I felt that the back side had no wear. Uh, all the wear was towards the front. So once uh, with the with the wire tying it back against the two back sides, then I squared this brass rod to make sure that this is perfectly square this way and perfectly square this way with the table, uh, so that I know that I've got it perfectly vertical with my cutter. Uh, so now all I have to do is find my center, and uh, then we can go ahead and proceed with our cut. So that's what we'll do next is we'll line up where our centers are, get this uh, and then we can go ahead with our, our cut. OK, 
Okay, so I've got this angle blade, plate uh, fastened down to the bed of the, the uh, mill, and then it's fastened, it's bolted to a flat spot on uh, the axle. And so we've got this firmly held here, and uh, we've got our holes vertical and uh, on both directions, so we're good there. The back side of our axle we're we held down with uh, a couple of clamps to the bed. Uh, we've got shims underneath it uh, to get our levels and uh, or get it all squared up. So now we're just about ready to find the center of our hole, which will be an interesting uh, development. We'll have to work at that. So uh, uh, I'll get that set up. Uh, once we get find those uh, centers, then uh, we'll come back to you. Okay, so we've got our uh, tooling centered, and so now all we have to do is make our first bore. When we finish with this bore, then we'll have to uh, uh, go back, change this bit to a longer bit so that we can bore to the bottom one. Uh, because this bit isn't uh, long enough to get down through both. So we'll have to pull this off. Uh, I'm going to leave the tooling in here because I don't have enough room to get it off. I'm just going to disconnect this, pull this off, then I'm going to put the new tooling in it. And I may have to cut the shaft on it because this is the tool that I have right here. And so as you can see, that's a little bit a tad bit long, so we'll probably have to cut the shaft down and uh, so that I can get this in to do the work that I have to do. So uh, we'll see what we can do. Uh, I might pull this back up as far as it'll go and or actually lower the table as far and so I don't have to cut as much, but as you can see I have to get it above that bottom flange, so that's going to be some work. So. We're going to go ahead and turn this puppy on. cuts done and perfectly in line nice clean holes so job accomplished now tomorrow I can make the sleeves and then we can reassemble this thing so to uh, make the sleeves for the opposite side we have to measure the uh, existing, the good uh, journals that we have here to determine what we want those journals to be when we're done. And to do that, uh, we'll measure these and then we'll measure the bearing itself to see what its outside diameter is so we know what the uh, uh, the uh, um, the fit is supposed to be between the bearing and this housing that we have here. So we'll go ahead and we'll do a measurement of this. So I've got my dimensions drawn. I always like to do that because it helps me to clarify things in my mind and it helps me prevent mistakes. So I've got all the dimensions drawn as they are to be built and uh, 
uh, that's, I find that very helpful. So we'll go ahead and we'll make these sleeves. Okay, we're going to take this over and uh, face it off. Hit our mark one four five five right dead on. So we'll go ahead and pull off our boring bar. Need that until we get to our next piece. I want to make sure that we have enough length from here to here. I've trimmed some off here in our uh, because of the taper. So uh, I'm going to measure that and uh, then we'll. Uh, uh, see what else we have to do before we part it. Okay, we were supposed to be 167, we're 168. So we're actually a little bit, uh, so let me get this camera set up so you can see. So we were supposed to be from from this edge here to this end, we were supposed to be 167. We're 168, and this could be cleaned up a little bit, and uh, we're fine. So we can go ahead and part this sucker off, and uh, we have our part. I'm excited. Tell you what, I'm just going to trim this just a little bit. There's a little bit rough on that. I'm going to go ahead and clean that up just a tad. And see if I can uh, camphor that one edge a little bit. So this is the finished part. 
nice finish on the inside of it. And that's our sleeve for the uh, narrow side. Now we have to make the sleeve for the wide side. So I need to apologize because I went and forgot to film my pressing in the sleeves. So we've got the, the two sleeves, top and bottom, uh, in. And uh, I've got the press on the top one right now. I haven't rolled it back up. And then I realized that, that I didn't film that. So we, uh, we've got the sleeves in our axles. So now all we have to do is press the uh, bearings in. And uh, then we can start reinstalling this whole system. Uh, I'll bring you back and when I grab the bearings. Okay. So now we have to push the seal in and the uh, there's a little flange in here and that needs to be up. So let's uh, take this back up. Lift that off. This goes up. And we push that down in there. There we go. Now we have to get this up for one. There we go. Perfect. So basically what that does is prevents the um, The, the uh, no one wants to say, but I can't get it out of my big fat mouth. What that does is that prevents the grease from coming out, so it's a seal. There we go. That's where it needs to be. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Well, we can see the bearings in here. We've got the seal at the top. Seal our bearings, so we're all set to to uh, reinstall that once we get the bearings on that side. Okay, so what we have here here's the boot that uh, uh, this fits into, like so, but uh, the part is broken off. This end is busted, and it typically fits in here like so. So uh, we need to make a new part. And I'm going to make it out of a little bit thicker material. And the reason for that is because this has been compressed about 3 8 of an inch. So I'm going to be using 3 8 inch stock instead of the 8 inch stock that was originally there uh, to make up for the compression. And that will get this back tuned in somewhat to where it was when it was new. It's interesting, the other side had no uh, com compression at all up in here and uh, it still has its shape, the middle part is still fine and so it fits nice and snug onto the the bracket so uh, and that's the back side, this is the front side for some reason the front side must take more abuse at any rate that's what we're up to now so uh, we'll get to it as we go uh, and hopefully I'll be able to shape this part uh, I'm going to heat it and bend it 
and hopefully I'll be able to shape it so that it uh, works efficiently. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so we've completed our task of uh, sizing that. So now let's see if it slides on. How do you like that, huh? And there's no play in it. Just the way it should. There's a lot of work to get that to fit, but we did it. A lot of work and grinding. Okay, great. Well, that one's ready to go back on. I'm going to lose a lot of pitting in this cast, which I'm sure was the way it was when it originated. But I'm going to take and grease these. I don't know if that's supposed to happen, but that's what I'm going to do. And uh, slip these things back on so that we don't have, uh, so we have some lubrication so it doesn't uh, pit and rust. So I think the other side, the original material, was uh, probably stainless or had a lot of nickel or something in it uh, because it's uh, still got that uh, silver color, no rust on it. So I just don't want to end up uh, rusting that. So we're going to have to replace it anyway. I'm going to have to buy a new boot. And uh, when I have another long weekend or something, I'll come out here and I'll... I'll uh, take and uh, put that in. So we have our boots fitted on both sides. Uh, we've got our bearings in and uh, 
I took and I cleaned everything out. I blew it out with a WD-40 and blew it on out. So the bearing bearings are all cleaned up and are ready for fresh lube, which we'll supply once we put the king pins in. So uh, I'm going to take this back to the forklift and uh, get it ready to mount. Uh, we're not going to mount it right at this point uh, because we have a couple of other things I have to do. One of the king pins has uh, been damaged, so I have to fix that first. And I'll show you that damage in a few minutes once I clean up this mess and I get set up to fix it. Okay, the other issue is these king pins. And after some thought, uh, I decided that uh, I'm not going to do anything with these. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall them. And uh, then I'm going to order two new ones. And I'm also going to order a new set of bearings. And uh, replace these and the bearings, the new bearings that I just put in uh, with new bearings. These have some, although I measured this from the top all the way down and the dimensions are pretty much dead on. We're within a thousandths one way or the other. Uh, we're, we're at 0.186 here, 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 and here and 0.183 here and here. So uh, the problem is, is I do see some scoring and uh, I'm concerned about the effect on those uh, bearings. So uh, I've just decided that we're going to replace these, but I need to get the forklift moving. And we need to get it up and running for our, uh, on Monday. I'm going to get new tires on Monday. The guy from the lift company is coming up. He's also going to put new, uh, uh, I guess they're injectors, in the lift. And uh, uh, once I get the new pins and the new uh, uh, bearings and the new boots uh, for the motor mounts, then what I'm going to do is tear it all back down and uh, replace that. But in the meantime, I'll have a forklift that I can use. And as long as I don't let too much time go by, then uh, it shouldn't cause any irreversible damage. So uh, that's my plans. That's what I plan to uh, uh, do and the way I'm going to approach it uh, for now. So let me bring you back in just a second and I'll share something else with you. So I got the uh axle back up in here. Here's the setup. You can see the forks of the old forklift. That's what I initially picked it up with because I couldn't get the jack underneath it. But the problem was is it wouldn't lift this back portion up high enough to uh, because of the roll in that uh, axle uh, casing. Uh, it wanted to tilt down and I couldn't get that back bracket up. So I had to take the jack, and you can see the jack down there, and jack that part of it up to get it up into the uh, casing. You can see right there is the bolt that holds the bottom plate, that holds the, uh, the uh, axle in. And I've got the front plate. You can see barely see that bolt. It's all uh, in. Okay, I heard our hydraulic uh, um, stirring cylinder is now installed. Uh, it's installed with four bolts on the back side of that, or the front side of the axle, where the uh, uh, hydraulics comes in. So this is the end feed for the hydraulics, and you got your two bolts on this side. And then, you have the same thing on this side. Two bolts holding the hydraulic cylinder on, your end feed for your hydraulic cylinder, and this is a shot of the cylinder. So here we have one wheel on. This is the king pin here that that uh, goes down and joins it to the axle, which is the two upper and lower sections, and this is the linkage to the stirring. So by uh, right now, it's extended all the way uh, out 
um, turn the wheel the opposite way, it pulls this in, turning this wheel back around the other way. So that's done. So tomorrow we have to get this tire replaced so that it's uh, flat instead of beveled. But uh, this is really rigid now. The wheel doesn't move back and forth like it used to on that pin by about a quarter of an inch. So that's a good deal. So, uh, okay. So what's the reason? Why did I go ahead and do all this work? Why didn't I just have the, uh, uh, the lift guy come in and fix it? Well, this is why. This is his quote. That first line item is the cost of the rebuilt axle alone over three thousand dollars for that axle uh, and that doesn't include all the bearings and everything that I'd already purchased that's the reason I went ahead and fixed it myself instead of having the uh, mechanic supply a rebuild axle and then remount it and all that sort of thing I figured it was worth a weekend very easily <laughs> I could have spent two weeks on it as far as I'm concerned. But it was worth the weekend pulling that in and fixing it myself. Even if I replace those pins, the cost of the pins doesn't matter to me. Uh, the cost of the bearings, uh, the cost of the mounts, the mounts would have had to been replaced anyway. Um, so uh, they would have probably um, hit me with another price for new mounts. Uh, it wasn't on this original quote, so I would have gotten all these extra charges uh, from them for doing that. Um, their, their total estimate for all the, the work of doing that axle, replacement of that axle, was $4,690.44. I figure I'll have probably about uh, another $400, maybe $600 in the king pins, the mounts, and new bearing sets. And then, uh, you know, I think I've made myself a good deal in uh, rebuilding that myself instead of uh, having a mechanic do it. So that's the reason I spent this time this weekend uh, to uh, get that done. Uh, that's this video. Thanks for watching EDS Inc. Shandon. We ask that you, uh, if you uh, enjoyed the video, then give us a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you can give us a thumbs down. Uh, if you like our content, if you want to see more of this, then go ahead and subscribe to us. We appreciate that. Uh, there's no cost to this uh, YouTube video. Uh, I'm just uh, learning as I go and taking you for the ride. If you want to view it, if you don't want to view it, that's fine with me too. But anyway, this is Jeff Erdman, EDS Inc. Shandon, out. Thank you much.